Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. My name is Mobby, and today I want to talk about, recap, and review Better Call Saul Episode 3, Season 6. So, wow, the uh, initial reactions, I knew this was coming, I didn't know exactly how it was, but even though this episode was particularly very slow, it was a huge departure of a certain main character. Once again, spoilers ahead right away, so I'm just going to say it. Rip Nacho, he was one of my favorites. So let's get into the details and what happened in this episode. So this one was written and directed by Gordon Smith and released April 25th, 2022. And this was a 47 minute episode. So it begins with a slow pan during the desert and you see a blue flower. I don't know the significance of this particular flower. Um, honestly, it didn't show anything in the episode why it was there. It could be some sort of symbolism. Maybe there was like blue in the episode I couldn't see um, but then you hear clinking rain on a bottle it starts to rain and it ends there that's the opening so it starts with Nacho got away with his truck after his little encounter with the, with the Salamancas at the little motel there his truck you know is totaled he has to get out of it he's still being chased but he finds and hides in an abandoned oil tanker, which is still oiled up. So it's very dangerous to breathe and all that stuff. He has to dip in oil to actually avoid one of the Salamanca brothers who, you know, finds the car, sees the oil tanker and goes to look inside of it. So he has to go down, hold his breath in that oil. Very dangerous, very, health, you know, crazy health hazard. Even worse after they leave because he's safe. He has to wait until nighttime until he can get out under the safety of the dark dark in the moonlight and then go from there and now and then cuts from him you know finding a water hose from a car garage he gets help from a worker there you know he gives him a little bit of a, a rag to help clean himself off he asks to use the phone and here nacho calls his dad and you know the dad thinks it's a, a typical day maybe he wants to not really ask for anything but maybe he's he's like oh nacho ignacio wants to maybe persuade me to like run away or do something else so you know nacho being the very protective son that he is he doesn't show his emotions too heavily on his sleeve but when it comes to his family when it comes to his dad he almost breaks down you know tears swelling up all that stuff but he he's basically just says you know I want to hear your voice, Dad. You know, and, you know, take care. Sayonara. Well, he says, uh, you know, later. Adios, Papa. That's the word. So, you know, it would have been nice to have even more of an emotional connection there. But once again, this is his relationship. You know, he is somewhat estranged, but man, he really wants, he loves his family. He wants to keep him safe. So that was his final interaction with his dad. So, yeah. Nacho. Uh. All right. So. Um, he then calls Mike, and it goes back to the scene from the other episode where uh, Mike is trying to uh, persuade Gustavo to let him live and stuff like that, and he gets a call there. So that's when he calls from that specific point. And they basically say, hey, he wants to talk to Gus. He basically tells him, hey, he's pleading that, hey, I know what you want, Gus. You don't want any of this to trace back to you. You were going to pin it on me. You backstabbed me. But I will go along with it if you keep my father safe. So it sucks. But once again, he's doing everything he can to keep his family safe. After that little interaction, it cuts to um, Saul. I don't even know if I want to call him Jimmy or Kim uh, or, or Jimmy or Saul. Uh, so it goes back to them. They're in her apartment and they're discussing further plans to take down Howard. It's pretty funny. They actually have a nice little uh, uh, like a board there with a bunch of uh, post-it notes with all their ideas and a timeline. Um, after that, it goes right to the courthouse. Kim is talking to one of the prosecutors, her one of her colleagues, who actually brings up Lalo to her in her discoveries, letting her know, hey... I want to talk to you before I want to talk to Jimmy. Basically, she theorizes everything and is completely right. You know, hey, Jimmy represented Ignacio. Now he wants to uh, represent, you know, the, the Guzman, the Guzman. And then, you know, basically she gets it all right. He is, you know, a friend of the cartel now. But she's like, hey, don't worry about it. Lalo is dead. So, you know, convince Jimmy to go out and rats so this is going to be a big thing because in this episode lalo does not get his own little sort of satisfaction closure with nacho that means he's going to be a huge big thing with jim and with jimmy and kim so i think what what i thought was going to happen is going to happen jimmy will try to do the right thing because he's like i'm safe he's gonna rat somewhat 
Lala will find out, and then he's going to kill Kim. I think that's just what's going to happen. It's, it sucks, but, man, I, I don't see this going any other way. Um, unless, you know, Kim is just out of the picture somehow, and they don't kill her. Who goes? Who knows? Who knows? So, yeah. Okay, so after that, it goes back, back to uh, Gus's uh, factory. Nacho randomly just emerges from a truck from one of his trucks. Well, I guess it's easier for him to uh, go from the uh, Mexico to U.S. because um, his trucks go there all the time. So they totally skipped that, and he was just he just showed up in America in Gus's farm. So he emerges from the truck, and now he's talking to Mike, and they're going to be now discussing their plan for Gus's plots, you know, making sure they get their story straight, and he basically pins everything, everything down on Nacho. Nothing gets traced back to Gus, and we know that this is going to go the way that it did, you know, because in the Breaking Bad, Gus is completely, you know, fine. He still has problems with the Salamancas, but he's, like, completely fine with, uh, you know, Don Eladio and everybody. So, yeah, we, we knew that his plan was going to go out. Not without maybe a minor hitcher there, but completely the way he wanted. So unfortunate. Um, so they say right before we're going to deliver you to Bolsa the Salamancas, you look a little too pretty. So they were going to beat Nacho up, but Mike did it himself. And he also pulled out uh, some alcohol so they could have one last drink together because Mike really respects Nacho. He knows because, you know, they met at the beginning of the series and they have like, a, you know, they had some business together. They never really talked and hung out. But, you know, they can tell from their very limited interaction like, hey, we're both family people. We're just trying to keep people safe. I know you want out of the game. I'm, you know, and I'm walking the fine line. So, yeah, he has a lot of respect for him. It, uh, yeah, I don't know how this is going to um, affect Mike going forward. Nacho's death here. All right, so now um, it goes back to a restaurant. The, I think the restaurant you always see uh, where all the lawyers are. Uh, Howard valets his car. He will swipes the key by bumping into the valet guy. And then really quick in the matter of a minute or so, they have a, a, a locksmith there and they make a... Um, a fob copy for Jimmy so he can, um, you know, electronically remotely, you know, uh, lock or unlock Howard's car. And that's it for that. He will also quickly ask Jimmy, you know, you're a lawyer. You do some shady stuff here and there, but you make good money. Kim's a lawyer, but she's a legit lawyer. Why are you doing this? You don't need the money. And basically, Jimmy just says, hey, we're, we're doing this for the greater good, blah, blah, blah. Basically, he's lying to himself and he will like, hey, we're not doing this for the money. Uh, we're just doing this for the greater good, you know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, sure I'm gonna get a little bit of money, but also the all of the sandpiper, you know, residents are gonna get money and stuff like that. So yeah, it's a small little like, come on, Jimmy, you know. All right. Well, anyway, now it goes uh back to the restaurants. So Kim lets Jimmy know that Lalo is dead, you know, via the the prosecutor who brought about her information, and basically all of her concerns, like you you could talk. And it could look good. And also, all of your, uh, all of these maybe sort of crimes will be completely exonerated. You're going to be completely fine. And the line I want to say is, she says, so are you going to be a friend of the cartel or a rat? And I think he ends up being a rat because he thinks he's safe. And like I said, Kim's probably going to be taken out. Unfortunate. Okay, now goes back to Mike, Gus, and Nacho. You can see um, a little bit later after their drink, he, Nacho is now super roughed up you know, bleeding, all that stuff. And they're in the truck. They're getting their, they're, they're in the van heading to meet with the Salamancas. They're trying to get their story straight. He's basically to say, Hey, I was hired by some guys in Peru, blah, 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 to take you guys out. Um, and you know what? Uh, Mike asked to be near there when it happens. They asked, he asked to be near there and Gus is like, fine, you know, I'm not going to fight you on it. Go ahead. So the next day they would not show and they're in the van. And uh, before Mike gets out, he takes one last look with Nacho eye to eye, a couple of feet away. You can see Nacho's eyes really swelling up. You know, he knows this is his last day, his final moments. And, um, yeah, he just nods and he's like, it's going to be okay, man. You know, you, you know, you don't need to say it. They just know it's been a ride. I, You know, we respect each other. That's it. I'll see you. You know, so that and then Mike dips and he goes hide on one of the mountains he takes out his sniper and he's basically watching the whole thing play out oh man okay so they meet up with both of the salamancas gus victor and uh tyrus they're out there and they they basically take out nacho they throw him on the ground and on the other side is both of the salamancas and hector behind the swim the twins and then you know they take off his tape over his mouth, and then everything gets started. Nacho basically starts going along with the story, saying, Hey, 
I was hired by blah, 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 blah. But then he also goes off the script a little bit. He says what's really on his mind. He hates the Salamancas. They're the freaking scum of the earth. And then Hector's there. And he goes, hey, Hector, I'm the one who put you in that chair, blah, 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 blah. Whenever you're like in your nursing home, suck it up, Jello. You're going to be thinking of me. Very nice. Well done. Little rant speech yelling at them. Very good. Very good. That's a really high point for Nacho right there. Uh... But something that went off the script as well, uh, the plan was he was going to get loose and run away and then Victor would shoot him in the back to make it quick and easy. But I think Nacho thought, hey, I don't know. I don't trust these guys. Something might happen because if he lets them go the way they wanted to, um, the Salamancas are going to go torture him and all that stuff. So he wants a quick death and also he wants to go out on his own terms. So he had a piece of glass, the, the same glass you saw in the cold opening. And then he stabs Bolsa, grabs his gun. He, he holds him up to gun points. Mike says, hey, do it. Do it. And I don't know what Mike meant by this. Does he mean he wants to kill Bolsa? Maybe take some people out? Or, hey, kill yourself. Who knows? But Nacho, a surprise to me. I did not know it was going to happen so quick, so fast. With the gun, he shoots himself in the head, drops down. Everyone just goes about their business. Um, Hector um, gets taken over to the body via the twins and they give him a gun and he, from his little wheelchair he shoots to the body unfortunate dude and it cuts like a little bit away but you see Nacho's body like sort of moving around jiggling because he kept getting hit by bullets it's really sad really really sad way to go but once again it's showing the, the reality of hey you know you're in the game you can just go get taken out like that no respect etc so Mike sees it all and you know you know he, he accepts it he's like this is you know I prepared for this blah 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 but, you know, other than that, he just, you know, everyone just walks away. Gus walks away scot-free. Who knows if they're going to be, you know, on his ass anymore about this. But that's it. That's it. And it is the end of the episode. So, overall, episode 3, season 6, I'm going to give this a 6 out of 10. Now, there's, there's a couple of reasons. 6 isn't necessarily bad. I'm just saying, like, 10 is, like, a perfect episode. And the reason why 6 is, I, I made it 6, it's because even though this had a really, really important finish to a character's arc and their death it really important i love nacho's character i wish he didn't go out that way um i i just wish it had more more nacho moments you know before it happened it seems like i don't know it's a, it's a like this episode was pretty much dedicated to him with a couple of scenes with jimmy and kim but for the most part it was all nacho and it was very slow not really much happened in story development wise besides this points like nothing crazy new happened it's just pretty much nachos episode but it didn't feel like it felt like they it was okay it was his episode but only a slow a small amount of events happened that led up to the death it was very slow otherwise i wish they just said more 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 nacho it would have been great but you know uh, so I think the reason why it's a slow episode is because this season in particular it's going to be the most amount of episodes in you know in all the seasons thus far it's been like what 10 episodes a piece this one's like 13 to 16 i forgot what it was so yeah they're gonna be stretching it a little bit so yeah i mean ah, i i i, I want to say i didn't see you know I, I wish i didn't see it coming but i really did you know he's not in breaking bad and how is he gonna get out of here you gotta have some shock value in the show so yeah they had to take him out it's the final season damn nacho was a good character too cool guy but that's it so that's it uh six out of ten very slow love nacho wish they had more all right, guys, going to end it here for you guys. Enjoy, leave a like. It helps a lot. If you haven't already subscribed for daily videos, let me know what you guys think about the episode. Next week, uh, we'll figure it out. Episode 4 coming in. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.